But I'm reminded one day before the day of Pentecost, <laughs> they're all just sitting around like we are perhaps today, before a great outpouring of your spirit that came and, and touched the world that then has never been the same since. Touched men and women all over the country, Lord, all over the world. And today there's a fresh outpouring of your spirit that's touching afresh and you're igniting vision and dream and purpose and plan. And so, Lord, today I, I just come and, and I ask you, Lord, that whatever part we have to play in this, whatever part, each and every person that's sitting here right now that can hear my voice, Lord, I pray that whatever part we have to play, that you would fulfill that in our lives. Revealer of truth, reveal it to us, whatever you have for us. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So the first thing that I want to speak about, because I've been sharing a little bit lately about relationship and things of God, the first thing and most important thing is my relationship and love for our Lord and Saviour. Friend, every one of us, that's got to be the focus, the main focus. Anything else, ministry, uh, God could send you anywhere, anywhere, anything. But the main focus of our whole life has to be the most important thing is that my relationship, your relationship with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen? To sense His presence and love around your life. Here this morning, in your car, washing the dishes, milking the cow, you can get it even right now. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Christianity really is a relationship, not a religion. Christianity has got to be a relationship with Jesus Christ. Whoever, whatever God does with our life, that's, not, that's, that's important, but not the most important. I don't care what, what God does, but my relationship and love for my Savior must be paramount in my life. Friend, if nothing else this morning, if nothing else this morning, but if we can just fall in love again with Jesus, amen? If we can somehow or other just lift up our hearts and say, God, I just want you more than anything else. I want you to be my God and I want to be your people. And I believe that out of that relationship, life flows. Out of a relationship, life flows. Ministry flows. Christianity or living for Jesus is not an add-on, it's everything. Acts 4.13, I just want to read this to you this morning. Is it okay to read from the Bible? <laughs> Acts 14, oh, Acts 4 rather. going to read verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness, everybody say boldness. See, when, when people see us, what do they see? Do they see a religious person? They see somebody with a great big Bible or something like that or just walking around saying religious things? But Jesus, these guys, his disciples, have just done some amazing things. And the religious people were angry and upset with them. And they didn't really know how to handle them or what to do with them. And a lot of people, when they come across us, they won't really know. You know, it's not whether you've got a big cross around your neck or, or whether you've got a bumper sticker that says, Honk if you love Jesus. We're not geese, by the way. <laughs> And it says, but now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Friend, you might come to church, but I want to say to you, have you been with Jesus? 
Have you allowed Jesus to, to touch your life? Have you allowed him to, to minister to you? Have, you? have you allowed him to, to touch your heart? Because that's what it's all about today, amen. We know John 3.16 that says, So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, how many people are whosoever here this morning? That whosoever, we can all come. There's no, there's no high rankings or anything like that. But God loves us so much. And, you know, I want to just say this. In all Christianity, in all your walk with God, if things don't really go your way, never, ever get angry with God. If things go wrong, it's usually because of wrong input into our lives or wrong teaching or wrong thinking. But I want to tell you, there's nothing wrong with God. Don't ever get angry with God. That song that Greg was writing, uh, that's singing tonight, today, he wrote that song, but he wrote it out of something. He wrote it out of a situation, and, and, and then he was saying, but I will rise above the pain. I will rise above the shame. I will rise above. And that's what Christianity is about. That's what we're about here this morning, to rise above whatever's going on. And give him, God, all the glory. Jesus died as my substitute on a dreadful, horrid, I cannot even express, I don't have the words to be able to even get across what, what that cross would have looked like. What the pain, the shame, the, the whatever it might be. But you see, Jesus rose above the shame as he, as he was there naked. He rose above the pain as the nails were driven into his hand and the, the anguish that would have been in his body as, the, as breath and the weight of his body was just cr causing his lungs to, 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 to subtract and, and breath was so hard and the, the they say that then he would push up on his feet to, to release his lungs a little bit, but the agony and the pain in his feet, he couldn't do it for long and he had to release it again and, and, and just sat there, but he rose above it, amen. And because he rose above it, we can rise above it. There's nothing too difficult. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing that we can't overcome. There's nothing that, that, that we can't rule and reign over with Jesus Christ. Jesus died as my substitute on that cross. He carried it for me. He who knew no sin became sin so I could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And what we've got to, in our identification is that we've got to understand that Jesus became something so I could become something. He didn't do it because he needed to. He who knew no sin became sin so that I could become something. A sinner could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became sin so I could be free. He became sickness so I could be healed. He became pain so I could be delivered. He became whatever it was needed. He became death so I could become life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me will never die. Do you believe this? I am the resurrection and the life. Why? How could he say that? Because he rose again. Because he endured the, and the suffering of the cross. We know that it, that it says that there was 12 legions of angels he could have called upon. He could have done a lot of things, but he carried it all the way. And then at the end, he could say, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. What an amazing Savior. Jesus died. He became sickness. But then last week I was sharing this, 
He said, it's better for you if I go. And I want to just read some things here, if I may, in John chapter 16. John chapter 16. How many people know that this is an amazing book? It's got all the answers. And it says in verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage, or it's better for you if I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. I'll sin because they do not believe in me of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is already judged. Then it says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you or he will lead you into all truth. Why don't we just throw our hands in the air right now and say, Holy Spirit, will you lead me in truth? Where, where I've been in error, where I've, where I've misunderstood or where I've even been taught wrong. Help me, Holy Spirit. I ask you to come and lead me into truth because it's only the truth that will make me free. Amen. Amen. The truth will make you free. I want you to have a look now in Ephesians chapter 4. Sorry, I haven't got all these done properly, but amen. You see, Jesus says, it's better for you if I go. But when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And so now we've, we've got this Holy Spirit. And, and Dave this morning saw a vision of a dove. And, and, and people have got all these different concepts of the Holy Spirit. But really, friend, this morning, the Holy Spirit's not just going to, well, I'm, I'm just going to say it like this, walk through the door and say, I'm the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not a necessarily a tangible thing. He's the a a power of God. He's a supernatural anointing of God. And yet, He still moves and amongst us and reveals things to us, convicts us, touches us. But you see now what God does in, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8, it says this. It says, Therefore he says, When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. When God says men, he's not talking about the male gender. He's talking about mankind. It's not a man-dominant thing. It's a people. It's us, man, man, women. Some women that have carried the amazing anointing. Somebody told me once that women shouldn't minister in the church. And I said, well, what was the greatest message? of the New Testament. And they scratched their head for a while and, 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 I, and I said, to me, the greatest message in the New Testament was brought forth by a woman. And they ran up to the disciples and they said, He is risen! <laughs> He's alive! You know what? The men didn't believe Him. Oh, glory to God. Some people say to me, where would we be without women? And I say, still in the Garden of Eden. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Glory to God. But he gave gifts to mankind. See, we, we, are, we today need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so the Spirit of God can work through us and in us. Now this, he ascended, does not mean but that he also first descended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of earth. 
He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. This is it. Then he himself, everybody say he himself. He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Friend, I want to tell you, there is so much in those couple of little verses that if we could get our mind and our thinking around that, it would explode on the inside of you. It would cause you to rise up and, and understand what God wants to do in and through your life. You are not a mistake in zippers. You are not an accident looking for a place to happen. You are a child of the Most High God, and God wants to do things in your life that will blow people's minds and imaginations. Now look, you just remember, Jesus took ordinary fishermen. They hadn't most probably been to the seminary. They hadn't been educated. They hadn't had this, but they'd been touched by the power and the anointing of a living God. They went forward and they did what God wanted them to do. The same things that Jesus did. They healed. They, they set the people free in and through the name of Jesus. These learned people did not know how to handle them. They said, we can see that they are uneducated men. We can see that this and that, and we can see all the natural, but there's another thing that we can see that is even more dynamic than anything in the natural. Like it, it's obvious that they have been with Jesus. To me, that says a lot of things. It means that coming to church is not a matter of coming in like a lump of seaweed and having a shunder of Monday and going out again. It means coming and being endured with power from on high. It means coming together, the body of Christ, edifying, lifting up one another, the ministry gifts that are in the place, the prophetic, the whatever it might be, the teachers, the, the different ministry gifts that can operate and challenge and touch and, and edify and encourage and build. God wants to build your life so that you can carry the mantle that God wants to put on your life. You are not finished. You are not over and done with. God has got great plans for our lives. And the, as we read that, the thing there, friend, I want to tell you, I had this message prepared before I went to that other meeting. I'm not trying to uh, promote apostles or goodness knows what, but I know that, that God has got things for us to do. Apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, are gifts of are gifts to the body. This morning, I sh I was, if I had more time, I was going to put a bow on. <laughs> Gift wrapped. <laughs> if I had enough time, I'd put a gift wrap around all the, all the singers up there. And then I'd put a gift wrap around all of you. Because we're all gifts to one another. Amen. We are, it's not a matter of the pastor up here, Shakarundi, with my lovely blue shirt on that Nancy said has been in the cupboard for two years. <laughs> First time I saw it today. <laughs> But you know, there might be some things that you haven't seen for a long time either, but you might see them today. You might see the importance of who you really are. You might see what God's really got in store for your life. Never give up. Don't quit. Just believe. What was, what's the whole purpose? It's the, the gift is to equip the saints or the church. 
to equip us. What for? For the work of the ministry. Well, that's your job. No. No. To bring us to the unity, not necessarily with each other. I could be in total unity with David, and I'll pick David because I've known David for over 40 years. I could be in totally, total unity with David, and we could both be wrong. <laughs> hmm? See, what, what God wants to do is He wants to bring us into the unity of the Spirit. The unity of Christ. Because he's the, he's the beginning, He's the author, He's the finisher, He's everything. Bring us into the unity, not necessary with each other, but to bring us to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. I, I was... <laughs> God, God, <laughs> who, who said, let there be, <laughs> created the whole universe, I reckon that that same God, if he wants to bring me into a place with him, I reckon he can do it. You can say, oh, that's too hard. You, you. If you ask Nancy, she said it never happened. But you know. <laughs> he may still have a lot of work to do. He may still have a lot of chipping to do. He may still have a lot of things to take out and pull out and do. But I reckon that if a God who spoke a word and created the whole universe, and today the sun and the moon and the stars and everything like that hang out there because he said it, I believe if he said that he wants me to come into the unity of the spirit of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, I believe that he can do it. If I've got an ear to hear what the spirit of God's saying and not what popular opinion saying. Because a popular opinion person will go nowhere. He might have the favor of man, but he won't have the favor of God. to bring us into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Nancy's prayer is finally going to be answered to a perfect man. <laughs> All the ladies lay hands on your husband's heads. <laughs> But it goes on to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I reckon that's worth a clap, amen? The baby's just got born, hallelujah. Mother's running out. She told me that the daughter-in-law or daughter was in labor, hallelujah. Father, that's lost. I'm glad I'm not a woman. <laughs> And all the men said, praise God. See, the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, this is what God wants to do to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, I believe that another word for that is maturity. Because he goes on to a perfect man. That we should no longer be children. God wants to move by His Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we must make room for God to come. We, in the old days, but Wombai, the music would play and the presence of God would come in. 
How many people can remember it? Come on, you were here. The presence of God would come into that place. And we would, we would just worship. I, I can remember standing on the platform, just I, I was watching as, as, as God was doing things. I, I saw a young man come in through the do door, halfway through the, the worship, run over to his mother, hug her, tears, Goodness knows what was going on. Saw the, these two getting restored. People were being touched. People were being healed. People were being delivered. People were just weeping. Goodness knows what. God was just moving by His Spirit. And, and, and we wouldn't get a time to preach or anything like that because the altars were just filled with people. People were getting saved. People were getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And on the way out, people would... Not everybody, but some... Uh, we didn't have the word this morning. And I thought, excuse me, man, but the word came. <laughs> the word came, hallelujah. I believe this morning the word came. And it wasn't here just to play tiddlywinks. It was here to touch and mess with our thinking and, and stuff and See, if you're willing, if you're wanting, if you're ready. He knocks on the door of your life and he says, will you open the door? No. You might send me to China. <laughs> Can I tell you, if God sent you to China, you'd be the happiest person on earth if God sent you there. You hear too many people coming back that God never sent. Ooh. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things under him who is the head, Christ Jesus, in whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the affected working by which every part does its share, causes growth. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. <laughs> Father, take us on. Come on, take us in. Take us, take us, take us, take us. i got another six pages here, but praise God. Jody, bring the music team up. We're going to sing a song. How great is our God. How great is our God. Let me just remind you today that the, this Jesus, called oh, the fire and the power of God, hallelujah. The anointing of Jesus. I just had that a little, let a little bit out. <laughs> Come on, you've got to get up there and play the piano or sing. Come on, Come on get up there. What are you doing laying down on the job? <laughs> on, get up there. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> hey, if, if the God, we've we, we got to get, what changes your, your thinking? Only the Word of God. God who created the universe. And you know what? There's stuff that man has never seen. There's not a telescope big enough. There's not a, a, a satellite or a spaceship designed to go. And, and the depth of what God has, a, a, a world where there's no end. It's got to be an end. See, the, your mind, it's got to be an end. Everything's got an end. No, there's no end. It just goes on forever and ever and ever. And then you see the end. And then it starts again. This God created. And, it, and He sent. He said, it's better if I go. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And, then, and then, then He says that when He ascended, when He rose again, when He, when he, he gave led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men and he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be pastors and some to be evangelists and some to be teachers for the equipping of the saints 
friend, don't just sit on your blessed assurance. Don't just wait for the rapture. Get out there and win souls for Jesus. Amen. I was going to talk about the Great Commission this morning. But friend, God wants to activate. He wants you to be so full of the Holy Ghost. So full of the power of God. So, so full of God that God moves and, and brings us to the full stature of the Son of God. That when we go, we do the work of the ministry. Telling people about Jesus. If they're sick, you lay hands on them. If they've got demons, you cast them out. Because you see, you are a carrier of the mighty commission and power of God. You. Let's stand up here. Splendor of the King, clothed, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Okay. How many people want to get activated? Give me a wave. Come on. All right. What I want is I want all the, the leadership team to come out here. Because in amongst us, there's apostles, there's prophets, there's teachers, there's evangelists, there's whatever. <laughs> Amen. God gave gifts. Is that correct? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. For what? Equipping of the saints. All these people have got little bows on them. They're all wrapped up. They're gift wraps. Amen. But this morning, if you want to get activated, you want God to activate you, you just come and stand out the front. We're going to pray over you. We're going to pray and believe God to release just release us. Release us, Lord. It's an old worldly song, please release me. Release me. Release me. Release me. Release me. Now, now you've got to be careful if the power of God comes on these people and they start to fall over because there's not enough catches here. All the catches are somewhere else. <laughs> Just put your hand, just pray for people. Pray the anointing over people. Pray the anointing over 